Hi, and welcome to episode 4 of Getting Started with Google Earth Engine, our tutorial series on how to use Earth Engine and some of its features. So today what we're going to be working with is a example application or an example script that is on the Google Earth Engine help. And so what I've done is I've taken my own data and gathered it and I'm using it for a different application than what they were using it for. But the methods and the way that this is being constructed is the pretty much the same as theirs. I've done a little bit of adjusting for my own purposes. To begin, we're going to start with the data. First of all, we have data located here. We have our Landsat images that are imported directly from here. I just grabbed the image ID from the Landsat 8 32-day NDVI images, so that's what we're going to be using for our images. We're going to be calculating some NDVI, and our goal today is to calculate the dog park health of the dog-friendly parks of the city of Chicago. So the next data we have is the parks polygon. I obtained this data from um, data.gov and I will put a link to it but I'll show you what I had to do with it to get it working. First of all I loaded it into Google Earth because I wanted to work with polygons. There were a lot of the data files that was simply working with points and addresses and I didn't really want those so I wanted some polygons to work with because we're going to be doing area within DVI so we want polygons to work with. What I had to do was I had to create a fusion table for this since it was a it was an XML loading it into here and then I saved it um, you can just go here and go to save places as and then you can save as a KML which is how you can load things into a fusion table which fusion tables can be used in Google Earth Engine so when I loaded it into a fusion table the parks polygon looks something like this you have your big HTML descriptions here this looks like a big mess but you have the name of the park and then you have the geometry which is your KML so then by going over here and utilizing the um, where is it about this table you can then see the ID for the table and then you can import this ID into your script. So that's where it is right there. You're going to do feature collection, FT, colon, and then the ID. So if you're loading in anything from a uh, feature collection or from a fusion table, that's what you're going to be using. And then you can also search up here and get other data. So if you need the other data, that's where you're going to get it. That's where I actually got the Chicago dog parks, dog friendly parks data by searching it up here. But yeah, I also was able to find it through data.gov as well. So what we're then doing is we're going to use NDVI to tell us what a very green fun park for your dog would be and what park would not be so much fun based on this data right here. This is we're going to be looking from 2014 to 2015. So we're comparing all the images then the median of all those images for the NDVI value from 2014 to 2015. So this will give us the difference between 2014 and 2015 and maybe a general idea of what parks got greener and which parts didn't get as green. This is just a fun application. We're going to go run through this just for you guys to see. Next part we're going to do is we're going to take the difference of the NDVI. It's right here using this little simple subtract. So you're subtracting your 2015, which is right here, from your 2014 to get the difference in the NDVI. Next is where the rubber meets the road. We're going to be doing a buffer function. So we're creating this variable right here. And then we're going to be using a function. So we're buffering a feature, which is going to be our dog friendly parks or our and then we're going to be making a buffer of 100 meters around them so that way hopefully when we have the points that are how the dog parks are adjusted there by address so we can't really do anything NDVI or area related with addresses but what we're doing here is we're saying if the park is here within 100 meters there should be a polygon in this other data set that has the park in it. So within 100 meters, whatever park is in 100 meters of that data set, we'll assume it's a dog friendly park. And so what this looks like is when we add this and map this layer right here, just the parks by themselves, they will come up and look like this. So right here, we have all these red dots signify the address at which there is a dog friendly park. Now we're going to, I'm going to uncomment this, but this is a line that you'll have to write. And this is for your buffer. So then you'll be able to see where the 100 meter buffer is around the park. So as you can see here, it's selected a park. As you can see here, there's another park that's in that bounds. Here, there's another park in there. And so what this will allow us to do is it allow us to, whenever we see that there is a park within this buffer, we'll be able to select that park and then we will calculate the NDVI strictly for that park. So let me zoom out again real quick. And then the next part, part is selecting the dog friendly parks, which we will use this right here. We go all parks, which is our 
data for our feature collection. And we run a filter bounds for the buffer park, which is our dog friendly park that we've ran that's displaying here on the map. So when these buffers around it, we're running to filter the parks layer with this. So what this layer right here, we're saying if we have a park layer anywhere within 100 meters of one of these, select these parks and then make them their own layer by themselves. What we end up with is a filtered layer with only the parks that are dog friendly. And so that ends up looking like this. As you can see, we've selected the parks that are dog friendly within these areas. There we go. Depending on the geometry and the complexity at which they drew the KML, sometimes they can take a little bit longer to load. Some are big and some are nice, and sometimes they include a lot of points in these, so the geometry does take a little bit longer. But as you can see, there's parks all in these areas that we would consider dog friendly. Now, the next part is we're going to be clipping the NDVI large image that we've created with these, these two images over here that we've selected for this date range. We've done it for the entire area or for the entire image, but what we just want is the areas inside the park so we can work with those. So what we're doing now is we're clipping the difference of the NDVI and clipping it by this layer. So we're saying essentially give me a cookie cutter and only cookie cutter out the parks. We've created our NDVI palette. I've just copied and pasted it from the last video. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add this map to the layer so we can see the NDVI with just the parks. And what the final result ends up looking like is this. Now I went ahead and made some adjustments to the script. I removed the NDVI palette because that was giving some interesting color anomalies and I didn't really like that. So I went ahead and used a palette that is a very simple palette that's a simple just a red to green palette with a minimum maximum value here. Now when you look at this you might think wow that's pretty bad or you might be curious as to what these values actually mean here on the map. And that is the function of the last part of the script, which is a very useful function. It's our getting the data function. So what it'll allow us to do is print out the values for each of the parks based on the name of the park that was established here in this. So we're going to take this field right here where it says name right here, and we're going to print it out with the park change in NDVI. So that, hopefully, when we run it, without any hiccups, will give us the value. Now we're able to see what each of the parks change in NDVI was from 2014 to 2015, and if we're really curious about in a certain area, we can look at it with the inspector, and it'll give us the value at that particular pixel. Now remember that these values here are the average values for the entire polygon and that we have other values that are, the inspector values are the values for where your cursor is. So they may not be as reliable if you're depending strictly on the inspector, which I would not recommend. I would recommend maybe using the average or even trying to get the value at a point. I know that it's possible to do that. I should probably explain what that means. Essentially what you're seeing here with a lot of negative values is it means that you have a smaller NDVI value in 2015 minus a larger NDVI value for 2014. So this right here showing us that we actually had larger NDVIs in 2014 than 2015, meaning the NDVI was lower in 2015. So if you see these lighter areas of red, that would tend to mean an area where NDVI has decreased a little bit. Darker areas would include areas that have decreased more. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I will get to answering it. Thank you.